grew up near the railroad tracks in Southern California, just outside of San Bernardino. And I have many memories of climbing boxcars with my friends, balancing on the rails, and walking along the tracks with my father. From our house, we could hear the train go by all hours of the day and night. And it seemed to me as a child that every time a train would go by, my father would sort of pause as if to listen. Or in reverence, I wasn't sure, but I would do the same. And it was through this that we formed this uh, really special bond um, and connection with trains. As I grew older, I found out that my, great, uh, that my grandfather, my great-grandfathers, and my great-great-grandfathers all worked on the train. And uh, my family, along with many uh, other Hyaki families, uh, the train was a pathway of survival. It was a route to escape genocide uh, by the Mexican government. And, um, and so uh, when I hear the sound of the train, it not only connects me back to the place where I grew up and to the relationship with my father, it also connects me back to our Aboriginal homelands. All I have to do is touch the tracks, and those tracks are connected back. And so I tell you this story because the train is a, an example of a system. The railway is an example of a system. And a system is only as effective as it is designed by the, uh, by, is, as it is designed by the designer, but also in how it's used by the user. And so while the train was developed to be able to take a person from where they are to where they want to go, an unintended consequence for me through the generations was a loss of community, a loss of culture, and a loss of connection to a way of life that was very much connected to place. I work in public health, and unlike the healthcare model that focuses on individuals, public health focuses on communities as a whole. And so it really focuses on putting the systems into place that create conditions in which people can be healthy. And so when we think about the, um, oops, so when we think about the train and the uh, healthcare system for Native Americans, it is both a result of colonization and um, some unintended consequences. Tribes are inherently sovereign, and that sovereignty is carried out through traditional practices for thousands of years. Traditional practices were essentially a system that kept an entire group of people healthy. So it wasn't just about planting crops. It was about working with the environment, knowing the environment, knowing how to work with the environment in a way that was going to uh, capitalize on the strength that is in the plant, so that it, the plant could be the very best that it can be. And not only uh, was the plant harvested, but oftentimes, there were songs, dance, prayer. All of these aspects um, and ways of life are what keep, kept people healthy. Now, while many of these traditions still exist today, many have been uh, fragmented or, in some cases, completely destroyed by policies of genocide, forced removal, and assimilation. So in that sovereignty, although it's recognized in our U.S. Constitution, the federal government ha for the last 200 years has had a number of policies that have systematically broken down these systems. Initially, the health care was the war within the War Department. So the purpose of that system was to contain disease. And what people don't know often is that the health care is actually a trust responsibility. So in other words, in exchange for land, American Indians and Alaska Natives were to be provided with health care, education, uh, other social services. And so sometimes people will say to me, well, Mar Native Americans get free health care. And it wasn't free. It's been bought and paid for with land and with the lives of our ancestors. And so when we think about going from a place where you have a way of life that kept you healthy to now 
having a healthcare model that's focused on containing disease that was later turned into a similar uh, healthcare model that we have today that then just focuses on disease. Um, you know, it, it, it continues to, to build a cycle of, of illness. Traditional foods were replaced by commodity foods, which have little to no nutritional value. Boarding schools were introduced, so not only were children taken away from their families and the way that they were educated traditionally within their family home or within the community, they were taken away and uh, forced assimilation in the schools. Weren't allowed to speak the language, had to learn Western ideals. In addition to that, there were ban on, bans on traditional practices. Those bans weren't listed, lifted until 1978. So by the time I was seven years old, Native Americans were allowed to freely practice their traditional practices. So the result of this really has been a healthcare model that focuses on disease or the absence of disease rather than a way of life that keeps us healthy. Um, high uh, rates of chronic disease, diabetes, cancer, associated with diet and sedentary lifestyles. And our families face many challenges, as well as our communities. The challenge is that many people will say to me, well, Lena, that happened in the past. But I want to tell you that it's still happening today. Right here in Arizona, the lands considered sacred by the San Carlos Apache, Oak Flats, our Congress slipped language into a bill that privatized that, la that land for mining interests without regard for the tribe. Our brothers and sisters in Australia, our Aboriginal brothers and sisters, their communities are being closed and people are being relocated for the very same reason. In Rio Yaqui, in Mexico, they want to take the water, they are taking the water, have been taking the water for centuries to be able to move that water to the cities, move that water to support agricultural interests, while the waters at home are contaminated and health issues are resulting as an, at, 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 um, within the community. And so this isn't just something that happened in the past, it's still happening today, and the journey matters. So when we think about um, our lives today, we're really at an intersection. We're at an intersection of a belief of uh, kinship, a value of kinship, valuing relationships, valuing land and connection to land, not just because this is where I live, but this is who I am. Where I live is also who I am. We value the process, not just the destination. And we believe in holistic wellness. It's not just the absence of disease of disease, but it's the whole person, the physical, the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual. And where we intersect is with a Western model that very much at, uh, is about individual advancement, that has introduced ownership, this idea of ownership, what is mine and what is yours. It has also very results focused. What is the outcome? What are the results? And when we think about uh, disease, and a lot of times, in fact, a friend of ours just told a story about her mom, and she said, what brought you in here? The doctor said this to her. And she said, well, the car. <laughs> and the doctor asked her again, repeatedly. And then the doctor, and she kept saying, the car. And she finally turned to uh, her, her daughter, our friend, she said, does she speak English? <laughs> and she said, you asked her what brought her here. The car brought her here. I think what you mean is what is wrong? What, you know, what, is, uh, what are you experiencing? What discomfort? What's happening? So there's this disconnect. Um, but it's at this intersection of these traditional values and sort of Western healthcare that I, as the executive director of Red Star Innovation, stand. Red Star, the name Red Star has many reasons, but the one I'm gonna share with you tonight 
is about uh, celestial navigation. Uh, some of you might be familiar with wayfinding, uh, Pacific voyaging, and um, navigational practices have been used for centuries. And sometimes the red star is the easiest one to recognize when trying to identify where you are in relation to where you want to go. And anybody who has sailed or used other navigational systems knows that sometimes the best way to get from one place to another is not always a straight line. The journey matters. And so in our work for the last four years, we've been working with um, and meeting with tribal leaders, urban Indian health uh, organizations, tribal organizations, to better understand how can we carve out a space for ourselves to evolve these systems in a way that makes sense for us. And together in March, we held a forum where people from all over the country came and we identified a, uh, uh, some very uh, key strategic directions that emerged into a public health agenda, a blueprint for moving things forward. There were many things that emerged, but the very thing that uh, was at the core was that first and foremost, our health uh, services and programs need to start with community and family at the very center. That is at the very heart of everything that we do. Our culture, our identity, and, and uh, uh, our traditional practices and knowledge and ways of being are the foundation. That is what we stand on. That is where we, we pull our strength. And above us is integration, because we are not just our bodies, we are not just our minds, but yet our health system is designed to deliver service in silos. And we need to integrate, because it is in that view of the whole that our service can really have meaning. Many tribes are looking at different ways to carve out systems for themselves, to identify ways of doing, bringing, revitalizing traditional practices or ways of doing things that make sense for them. Some examples include traditional foods, both the planting, the harvesting, and the eating, right? So bringing healthy foods in, in a way that honors traditions, involves the community, and moves things forward. Tobacco is another. Commercial tobacco is so filled with additives and chemicals and is so addictive, you take something that was once very sacred and very special to many tribes, not all tribes, but many tribes have tobacco as central to some of their um, traditional practices. I know of a tribe that, has, that no longer was using traditional tobacco but has revitalized that practice of both the growing, the harvesting, the songs, everything that goes with that, but then also bringing uh, traditional tobacco into their ceremonies. The other is economic development. Uh, tribes have very diverse economic development, and as governments, they can enter into economic enterprise that not just benefit the uh, tribal uh, economy, but also the economy that's all around them. So there's examples of manufacturing, construction, forestry, food, uh, tourism, tribal economic development is very diverse and is a very important part of that sovereignty. So if we want to revitalize our practices and really look at the systems that we have in place, we need to reclaim our health. We need to reclaim our wellness and take ownership and make conscious decisions to make meaningful connections so that what we do uh, is by tribes for tribes. And in that, we can revitalize these practices and evolve the systems that work, that are in place, so that we can create something that improves health. Now, this isn't just important for indigenous communities. This is actually very important for everyone. Because for the first time, we're beginning to see changes in our nation's health, where the coming generations are beginning to live shorter lives than the last. And this has a lot to do with the foods that we're, eat, that we're eating. They're so genetically modified. They're so processed. It also has to do with um, more sedentary lifestyles, technology, and less physical activity. 
But not only that, through technology, while we can connect through technology, how many times have you been sitting at a table and everybody, or seen a table of people and everyone's on the phone connecting with someone other than the person who is right in front of them? In terms of education, people who are graduating from college aren't finding the careers as easily as they did when perhaps I graduated from high school. So the opportunities to, to make more than the generation before, which was the vision of my parents, and would be the vision of our children, isn't happening quite as easily as it did for us. And so all of us can benefit from looking at the systems that are in place and moving things forward. I want to take a moment to acknowledge my ancestors and those that have gone before for their sacrifices and their uh, persever perseverance, I wouldn't be standing here before you today, for they too st stood at an intersection. We are all standing at an intersection. What are you going to do to reclaim your health and your wellness? And how will you reconnect and connect with your family and with, commu and with your community to revitalize ways of life that will keep us healthy all of us. The journey matters. Thank you.